That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. There have been protesters over the uh, Trayford Pel uh, Pellerin shooting, and I understand that most of these shootings look bad without context or without somebody really looking through it. Like, my immediate reaction, too, upon seeing the footage before I watched through it about three or four times uh, with the Jacob Blake thing was, whoa, you know, because it is a jarring thing to watch somebody lose their life even when it happens to be justified. And I can understand how somebody that didn't understand that you can't just ignore police officer instructions and reach into wherever the heck that you're reaching into, that that might, you know, have the police officer and give him just cause to end your life. I can get how maybe the average person wouldn't t put two and two together on that. And other videos like that, too, I can understand how without context or without understanding police procedure, how you could think that that's a really bad thing. This one I don't understand at all. I don't understand how any logical th person with a functioning brain can watch this video and not think that the police were a hundred percent in the right on this one. Yeah. He got a knife. Oh. That man got a knife. They go shoot him. No, we got to wait. Now watch the, po the police car wait. tries to block no, his path got there. A knife. And then he keeps Get going the and keeps going. Police telling him to stop, drawing their weapons. Telling him to stop, telling him to stop. He, he has his hand on the door, then they open fire. Oh my god! Oh my god! So now they've shot him. Oh my god! Down on they the ground. They just shot this man. Alright, now let's watch it again. He See, there he is. Knife. Holding a knife. That man got a knife! Even the people that are filming him. realize that he has no, a knife. He he's walking toward, I mean, he's walking wait. very no, quickly and, and with knife. purpose. They try to block him. All the Get police the are ground. out there. See, they tased him, he didn't do anything to him, and only when he puts his hand on the door to enter the gas station do they open fire on him. They know that he's got a weapon. They just shot this man. And so this is what's so crazy to me. Who's in that gas station? Anybody that's saying that the police officers should not have done this, they're not thinking about that. Because this is a person that they don't have to wonder if he's dangerous, they know he's dangerous. They see him with a weapon. That alone, especially the way that he's reacting and refusing to follow instructions, they could have, at least by the book, dropped him right then and there. Why didn't they do it? Because they're trying to keep the guy alive. That's why they tried to tase him. That's why they tried to subdue him. Uh, subdue him. That's why they tried to block his path with the police car. Nothing they did was working. Nothing they did was keeping this guy from hurting somebody else. And they waited as long as they could. They showed restraint. Only when he's about to enter the gas station where there are people inside do they start unloading on him. And we saw exactly the same thing with the Jacob Blake shooting. It's only when he starts posing a danger to the police officers and other people and they have no recourse left. They've already tried every other tactic that they have. It's only then that they start opening fire on him. They are showing restraint. They don't want to do this. Do you think that even if there were a cop that were legitimately a white supremacist and a racist who wanted to kill a black person, do you really think he would be doing it in this environment? Really? That he would be waiting until America is burning in race riots before he would start doing that? I mean, you would think if anything else, he'd be holding off if that were actually his goal. So the idea that this is somehow raci racially driven is just ridiculous. And I don't see how any logical person can watch this and not understand that this is a, a good shoot. I mean, normally, and this really does go to show how far the Overton window has moved. Normally, and we saw this with several cases back in 2015, that the media would see a story like this, they might overreact, but with one that's this clear cut, they usually just kind of let it fizzle out. They might report on it, they might talk about it, and then they just let it die. The media is still pushing this one. Now, granted, they backed off a little bit because it hasn't gained a lot of traction, but the media would usually strategically just kind of let these things fizzle out if it didn't really help their cause or push their narrative. And yet there's a lot of people on the left that are using this when there's people protesting all of this that are trying to use this as an example of some kind of police brutality. 
which does go to show, in both of these cases, the only thing that matters is the skin color of the person committing the crime and getting shot, and the person that is pulling the trigger. That is the only thing that matters to them. It doesn't matter that he's putting himself in danger. It doesn't matter that he's putting other people in danger. It doesn't matter that this guy with a knife could have easily walked into this gas station and killed anybody inside, killed several people. I, what, what else were the police supposed to do? And here's something that I think about. And I think the reason that trying to play this one up is going to uh, be a real mistake if the media continues to try to do that. Who doesn't go into gas stations? I mean, you and your kids could have very easily been in this same gas station. And if that had happened and the police officers, because of the political correct garbage, had refused to shoot this guy even though he had a knife and was clearly headed into this place, if all of that had happened, and this guy wound up killing you or your kid or anybody, or the clerk or anybody else that was in there, those police officers would have neglected their duty to protect innocent people. You can't have that. At one point, my family actually ran a gas station. My dad's side of the family. It was when he was a kid. I never was around at this point in their life. But this could have very easily turned into a situation where this guy has a knife to this guy's neck, uh, the clerk in there, as a hostage. Or killed other people. I mean, if this kind of stuff was allowed to go on, then if it had happened at my family's gas station, I might not be here because he could have killed my dad. And I think the average person is going to look at this, because who doesn't go to gas stations? They're going to look at this and go, if the cops hadn't done what they did, I might not be here. And that's why I think this particular one especially is not only, I mean, it's, it's very clear cut that the police acted correctly. But even more so, I think even the average person that even may be pretty sympathetic to the Black Lives Matter movement and not know about all the other stuff that they're engaged in that, that might have even marched with Black Lives Matter, watches this and goes, yeah, they, I don't know what else the cops would have done. They, they absolutely acted the way that they should have. I think the average reasonable person absolutely does this. But unfortunately, there's a lot of unreasonable people that don't think that the only thing that does matter to them is the color of the skin of the people involved. And you can sort of see this illustrated by some of the people that were actually protesting, of all things, this particular shooting at the Shell Station where it took place there in Louisiana. So uh, this is a this is footage of them protesting and then a guy that just wants to go get gas. So you can check this out. So you see there, he's driving in there with his truck, and they've created a, a chain, and they're trying to keep the guy from going in. Now, I want you to notice that he's on the wrong side of the road. So he didn't make a right-hand turn into this thing. He made a left-hand turn. And they're obstructing traffic right now. There was a truck that actually had to swerve to go around him in the other lane. So now they're beating his truck. And then he tries to get out and get gas and they're blocking his pump and aren't letting him, you know, put his card in the pump and, and all of that. Now they're yelling at him. So you see all of that. So first of all, my one of my first thoughts is it's just like the when they burned down the Wendy's that Richard Brooks was shot at. Well, I didn't think that the cops acted inappropriately at that particular juncture either. However, uh, what did Wendy's do? And in this case, Shell didn't even call the cops. At least in the Wendy's case, the Shell or the, the Wendy's people did call the police, I believe. It may have been somebody else, I don't know. But the Shell had nothing to do with this. That just happened to be the station that this person was trying to go into to either secure a hostage or something. And so I don't understand why they're trying to obstruct the Shell's business calling the Shell Station racist and trying to keep... The, I mean, for all I know, the Shell Station is owned by somebody that's not even white. May even be a black guy. I don't know. But the Shell Station didn't do anything wrong, so why are you keeping them from getting business? That doesn't make any sense at all. And I really do feel for whoever the owner of this particular Shell Station is. But the second part of that is, 
they were endangering the public. Because you saw that this guy is making a left-hand turn. He's not making a right-hand turn. This was uh, something that he had to turn across traffic to get into, and then all of a sudden they come up and block his path. Well, at that point, they're not only obstructing the person from getting into the shell station, which is private property, and you can't do that. Uh, th there are laws against that, and to my knowledge, all 50 states, you can't actively uh, keep go onto private property and keep a person from selling their product. It's not a thing that you are allowed to do legally. And so I don't know why the police weren't there to disperse that crowd as well. But nonetheless, he's turning against traffic. They block his path in. And then uh, when he tries to get in, there are trucks and cars having to drive around him because he can't get into the station because the back end of his truck is actually hanging out in the middle of the road. And so it's very possible that this guy didn't even see that there was a protest going on, didn't even see that there were people there, just takes a left-hand turn to the shell station that he always does, and then all of a sudden all these people just start showing up and trying to block his path in. I don't know if that's what happened or not. Maybe it was intentional, maybe he knew there was a protest going on, but I don't know about you, but I probably wouldn't have known that there even was a protest going on or assumed that there was before I just took a left-hand turn into the gas station that I normally stop at. And so it's just ridiculous. But what's even worse, and this is where the, the Daily Dose of Stupid gets real thick, uh, the Daily Dose of Stupid gets really, really prominent is in the protesters' reaction to him driving in and, and finally going through. And you'll also notice that in that video that we played, he doesn't like try to plow through them or anything. He stops and then just kind of turns his creep feature on, takes his foot off the brake and sort of coasts in, even though they're beating on his car. Now... The second they started beating on my truck, you're going to get a shotgun in your face. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm not saying that as, because, uh, as a threat or that I want to use it. I'm actually saying that because it's a deterrent because I want you to get the heck off my truck. Because I don't want you to get hurt. I don't want you to accidentally like wind up under my truck or something like that. The second that you start beating on my car, you're getting a shotgun in your face. Um, that's that, I mean, that's just like defending your own house. In fact, several states have a castle doctrine that extends to your car. And so the second that you start beating on my car, that's what's going to happen to you. And that's frankly what should have happened in this case as well. That This is the protesters reacting to the guy that drove through. This man took his vehicle and tried to pass it through a peaceful protest and tried to kill us. That's exactly what happened. This is why when we try to tell you we're trying to keep this city calm and this is what is happening a right racist, now this guy's yelling with friends folks that's they it they will run their car that's it to you act like they didn't do anything wrong you want to talk about inciting a riot and look at that somebody deliberately came here to cause destruction that's called domestic that's called domestic terrorism that's a domestic that's a domestic terrorist make sure that they hear the this is domestic terrorism all right, so this guy apparently is a racist and a domestic terrorist that showed up just to kill people and to cause destruction. That's what you heard from that. When I saw this clip, I thought, man, why does this guy not have a primetime slot on CNN? Because this is what CNN does all the time. And I know I'm harping pretty hard on CNN today, but they, they deserve it this week. I'm sorry. It's, it's been awful all week. So this is just what Don Lemon and, and Chris Cuomo do all the time. You'll see an event take place They'll tell you the exact opposite of what happened with a straight face and pretend as though you need to be outraged by it because they're outraged by it. How does this guy not have a CNN show? I'm genuinely asking because uh, that just seems to me like exactly what Don Lemon does every freaking single night. And when it comes to this guy, he's saying, well, this guy wanted, to, he tried to kill us. Well, if he was trying to kill you, he did a really, really, really lousy job. You've got a chain of people in front of you. And you have, I believe, an F-150. So this is a half-ton truck. If he wanted to kill people, all he would have had to have done is pump the gas. He wouldn't even have to pump it all that hard. If his intention was to harm people, then why did he turn on his creep function and just kind of slide into the spot? Because if you're trying to kill people, that's, and frankly, legally, you even have the right to do that if you, your car gets mobbed like that because you're in fear of your life. He even had a legal excuse to do that and still didn't do it. I don't know if he knew about all the intricacies of the legal system there, 
Not that I'm a lawyer, you know. But my point in all of that is, if he's some kind of racist that just wanted to kill black people and he, uh, the, the whole point was to do harm and to hurt people, he did a really, really lousy, lousy job of it. He's very bad at it. Because he had a perfect opportunity there and just let it pass, and then let it pass again, and then let it pass again. If this guy is some kind of racist or domestic terrorist, man, does he suck at it. And what's hilarious to me is, like, he's trying to interrupt a peaceful protest. Um, no. I think you could make the case that it's maybe violent, or, sorry, not violent, because I didn't see them actually harming anybody. But, first of all, they were pounding on someone's private property. That automatically means that it is violent, because you are potentially causing property damage. And then the second half of that is, it's not a peaceful protest if you're blocking infrastructure, in this case a road, which is illegal. And it's also not a peaceful protest if you are obstructing business of, on private property. So there's three things right there that make his claim of it being a peaceful protest completely incorrect. Which again, is what Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo do basically every single night. So when you ask yourself, where do they learn this kind of stuff? Where do they think that it's okay to just uh, pick it in front of a private business and keep them from getting business and obstruct roads and beat on people's private property? They learn it from the media. The media shows this stuff. It shows justification for it. It gives excuses for it. It says that this is okay, that we should be supporting it, or that at the very least we should be sympathetic and understand it. And then they use the exact same media's tactics trying to completely misconstrue what just happened, what you just saw with your own eyeballs. That you're saying the exact opposite of what just happened happened. They learned all this from the media. Now, I'm not saying that the media is the only source or they're the only reason that this kind of insanity and lawlessness has taken place. But you can draw a pretty strong correlation between their tactics, which means that they have been influenced by them at least to some degree. I'm sorry, media, but this is your Frankenstein monster, and we all know that you're not going to take responsibility for it. But this is why, even though I don't like it when Donald Trump and Trump supporters refer to the media as the enemy of the people, just because I don't think it's helpful and it's not productive, I understand why. Because they inspire nutcases like this and then condone their behavior when they break the law. I mean, I understand the reason that people think of them as the enemy of the people based on things like this. You can see where that mentality comes from. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them, I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter, and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.